Hi my friends. Welcome back to my channel. I thought today we would do a collage and I'm using various papers. Some I've made, some I've ordered online from either Amazon or Etsy shops. So yeah, and some I've printed off. This is a uh, uh, an image from an artist. I'll list the artist at the end on my description as along with uh, the, where I got the papers. And yeah, so yeah, let's just get started. This is I've laid it out just to give myself an idea of where to start and how the competition, competition, <laughs> composition will look. Um, I try to uh, tie pieces together. This is some uh, gel print paper I made and I'm going to bring a little piece up here just to tie the, the two sides together, as I said. Uh, this is common milkweed paper that uh, I got from Etsy, which has it's uh, some texture. It's fibrous and some little feathers. I think I, I don't remember where I got these little feathers. Anyway, so let me just dismantle this. And these are the pieces that I will start with. So I will leave these for now. This is 11 by 14 piece of cradle board. And so let's just start assembling our collage now this is the most bottom part of our collage so I will just adhere that to my my cradle board just using Mod Podge right now some pieces will be with Mod Podge the thicker pieces um, the ones I'm not worried about buckling because Mod Podge is quite a wet glue so it does tend to uh, buckle. Actually the first piece I need to put on is this and that's this is just a piece of parchment paper that I crumpled up and then I ran some black acrylic paint over it and of course, since it was wrinkled, some areas took the paint and other areas stayed just white and get that sort of grungy result, which I personally love. Okay, we'll put this down here first and then we'll lay our... No, I was right the first time. <laughs> Sorry, we'll lay this down first. Like that. And trusty old gift card. This works especially well with Mod Podge, as Mod Podge, as I said, to make your. Uh, papers buckle so using uh, the gift card tends to smooth that out push out any air bubbles okay so that's our very bottom piece Now, if you're going for a sort of glazed, shiny look, you could put the Mod Podge over top of your uh, material as you go along. I will decide later how shiny I want this, so I am not putting the Mod Podge on. I'm going to finish with some varnish, so if I go for a high gloss varnish or, you know, just K-Mar varnish, I will get that shiny look. Um, yeah, so now I'm putting on this milkweed 
paper. Um, yeah, I'm just going to use my Mod Podge and I'm just going to put it on my substrate, straight on the uh, cradle board. So this is my new favorite thing, doing collages. And I do sell at a shop and the collages are selling quite well. So I have to prepare for Christmas. Okay, just going to lay that down like that. Now, if I were to cover this over with the Mod Podge, I would kind of lose the texture. I would gain some shine, which in some cases I love. In many cases, actually, I love the shine, but not always. So, now, I did come over a little bit with the Mod Podge, so I'm going to... Uh, just lift that off with a baby wipe. There we go. Okay. And later we can trim our edges. Now, I have to remember what I had here. I think we would be safe putting this down. Besides where I want this other piece of the milkweed, I do want it over. this large piece. I don't want this piece to totally dominate my collage. So this goes this way over top. So yeah, this is next. And that can be tricky trying to figure out what goes next. <laughs> Normally I have a picture on my camera, but I use my camera for a picture on my uh, phone, but I use my phone for the camera. So This is what is referred to as auditioning. So I'm auditioning my pieces right now. And that about does it for the right. Yeah, that's about right. So I'm going to use the Mod Podge again, I think. I think this paper is thick enough that it's going to be able to handle the Mod Podge. We'll go for it. I don't mind a few a few little bumps, and I definitely don't mind some wrinkles. To me, it's just more texture and more interest. Some places I don't mind having that. So how's everybody doing? My little channel's chugging along. I uh, sometimes struggle with having losing my mojo basically I mean that happens those of us that are creators you and I sometimes you're just not up for it you know you like I say lose your mojo And my channel has been going, gee, now, over two years, and I still haven't been monetized. <laughs> Good thing I love what I'm doing. 
you have to have with uh, with YouTube, you have to have at least a thousand subscribers. So I'm well over that. But you always have to have four thousand viewing hours. Four thousand. So those of us that make videos that are 20, 25 minutes, people generally watch, you know, maybe five, six minutes, jump to the to the end. <laughs> that happens a lot. So if you consider each viewing being maybe six minutes tops, uh, you can well imagine how many how many people you have to view your videos to reach four thousand hours. So right, this is next, I think. So right now, I'm at around 3,000, almost 3,300. So almost 3,300 hours. So when I hit 4,000, then I'll start being uh, monetized. So it's taken a long time. Although I must say that was not my intent when I started my channel. My channel, I just thought it'd be interesting to do that. Um, yeah, I had been watching YouTube videos for some time before I started. It was during COVID, uh, just after I retired, you know, a year or two after I had retired. So yeah, it was during COVID. So it was a good time to uh, get involved with something new and fun and interesting. So that was YouTube for me. So, and I've just stayed with it. Although I must say, like I said, there's been some times when I've kind of lost my mojo. <laughs> okay, let's put on our piece of milkweed here, our other piece. And what I try to do is I try to tie things together. So I'm having a large piece of milkweed here and I have a smaller one here. So that ties these sides together. Um, I have this gel printed paper here and I'm going to put a piece of that just here just to tie the two sides together. So just little tips there. Okay, now I think I used the milkweed. Yeah, of course I did. I used the uh, Mod Podge for the milkweed and it worked. So I didn't apply it to the milkweed, but rather to the substrate, which is our cradle board. Now you want a fairly generous amount, but you don't want to make it too wet so that it comes up through your your milkweed paper which is you know handcrafted paper just adds some nice texture and it's you know different than your plain copy paper I just think it just is lovely. <laughs> I think it's just lovely. So, okay. Now this is our focal point. I don't want it right in the middle. A little bit to the left, I think. Because we're put, putting our little feathers up here. About here, I am thinking. But I want to not just have this sitting here with nothing sort of uh, I just want to add something. So I'm going to put my piece of milkweed down. Now this I'm going to put my Mod Podge on my milkweed because I don't want to have that shiny look on my paper. So, and it's hard to measure where it's going. So I'll just set that there. Now 
and a wee bit higher, I think. There we go. Now I can put my image down. Again with the Mod Podge. Yeah, let's try it with the Mod Podge. I shouldn't be gluing on top of my art piece. <laughs> Bad habits. Okay. Boot like that, I think. Lifting a little bit here. I got that right. I have a a wonky eye. I don't know. I've mentioned this before. I don't know if that's something I've always had and I've only discovered it since I've gotten into uh, arts and crafts or if it's something I've developed with age. I'm not sure. And I don't know if I'm the only one that struggles. Well, there's got to be other people out there that have the same issue. <laughs> I can't be the only one. Okay, let's put our little piece up here that's going to tie our a little bit to the left again. Overlapping a wee bit with uh, this. And as you can see, these are torn pieces, so I don't have too many straight edges. All right, now we have our little feathers here. And I'm using three. How are we going to put these down? I'm going to use glue stick because it's not as wet or else our little feathers end up looking matted. Okay. One. Two, and three, about like that. Okay, we need something to hold this, the ends of our feathers down. I have these little stickers. I have a little piece that fell out here. Yeah, that about works. That works. Oh, this is where I'm going to give him with a heavier glue. And I'm using Aliens Tacky Glue.
Oops. There we have it. Now I will be spraying this with a varnish just to finish it. I believe I'm going to have to think about that. Um, and if I do decide to spray it, what I'll do is uh, cover this area so that that doesn't get wet. Um, yeah. So now it's a matter of trimming the edges. Pretty basic. Just take your scissors and cut along the edges. Now I don't worry about getting it right to the edge of the uh, cradle board because I will take a piece of sandpaper to uh, smooth out the edge of my cradle board. anywhere where there's now if you can pr prefer if you prefer you can uh, always wrap that around the edge of your uh, board and go for that look okay So my edges are pretty well all trimmed. Now I come in with, uh, as I said, a piece of fine sandpaper. And I will, in the description, I will put, I will write what grit this is. But pretty well any fine sandpaper will work and just smooth it out to the front to the back and the front here with the uh, milk weed paper but quite doable now when you sand it with a soft grit you know, fine grit sanding paper, it smooths your edges out. So you don't have your paper coming right to the edge and take the chance of any of that lifting. So when you do this, it just blends it into your, into the board of the, you know, into the cradle board. So as you see, I'm sanding toward the edge and then gently coming down along the sides here to peel away any of the excess paper I have. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to finish that. And then we'll come back and look at where we are. Yeah, we'll go from there. I may come in with a Stabilo pencil. In fact, I probably will. And do the edges of all this just to add a little more dimension and to blend it together some more. So let me finish sanding and then we'll come back. Okay, so now we're at the stage where I'm adding the Stabilo pencil. And I've done most of it now, but I wanted to save some to show you. And this is an oil pencil. And you would just use this to accentuate certain areas and, and to blend things together. Sort of a, give you a sort of uh, 3D effect. So you just rub the pencil on. And with a water brush or a Q-tip or if you're like me, I stick my fingers up to my tongue and Blend that way. <laughs> I've done it around my focal point, some of the edges here. It just sort of makes a nice transition between the pieces instead of being, um, you know, like this being such a sharp edge it helps these to transition together and it gives you a sort of 3d effect and some people might prefer that the sharper edges and that, that's fine too So what I'm going to do after I have all my Stabilo penciling done, now you could leave this natural here on the edges. I prefer myself to uh, paint the edges with some black acrylic paint. So that's what I'm going to do. Now what you can do is mask this off with some painter's tape. I don't know if I have my tape here right now. Um, no, I have none. Yes, I do. <laughs> so I'm just going to take the painter's tape. Now be very careful that you don't rub this down too hard. You don't want to be lifting anything up. So I'm just masking it off. Right at the edge here. Now, especially with your milkweed, don't want to rub that in too much. So mask it off and then start your painting. So I'm going to continue continue with masking my my creation my collage and I'm going to paint the edges and then we'll come back and take a look so here we have it our 11 by 14 collage I finished up um, with the stipello on the edges. Gives it a little more depth. Sort of finishes off your uh, edges too, I find. And I put a couple of sprays of uh, Kmar varnish. Now that will protect it so that you can dust it. Once you put it on the wall, um, you have some, you need to have some means of cleaning it. 
So a little Kmart varnish you can go with the feather duster or whatever to uh, clean it. So yeah, there we have it. Some real basic colors, some muted colors, different textures. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, would really appreciate a thumbs up. That always helps. And if you haven't subscribed, um, today would be a good day to do that. And I hope you have, folks have a fabulous rest of your day. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.